Hey guys, Toast here. Today we're going to discuss my top 5 tips to improve your gameplay as the Assault class in Battlefield 1. These tips are designed to make you a more useful Assault to your teammates as well as improve your survivability and increase your skill and level of comfort with this particular class. These tips are in no particular order as I feel that they're all very important to being an effective Assault. The Assault class is essentially the opposite of every other class when it comes to optimal range, where the Medic, Support, and Scout classes are all solid from mid to long range and are far from ideal in close range, the Assault class weapons pretty much dominate in close range and quickly become obsolete at longer ranges. In fact, of all the Assault class weapons and variants, including the Slug variant for the Model 10A, the farthest maximum damage distance is a mere 15 meters out from the player before tapering off. By comparison, most of the medic and support weapons don't begin tapering off until at least 20 meters out, many of them being further, and most of the scout class weapons don't even begin to ascend to their maximum damage range until 40 or more meters out. This really solidifies that as an assault player, you need to limit your engagement distance to very close range or risk being easily outgunned by all other classes. Sure, you can win some gunfights at those longer ranges, likely with the Hell Regal thanks to its large magazine and low recoil, or the Model 10A Slug variant thanks to its slow damage drop-off, but the majority of the weapons and variants are designed to be used at close range and close range only. Because of this, pick your battles wisely as initiating a distance engagement with anything other than another assault likely isn't going to end in your favor. Okay, so obviously this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but with the exception of the Model 10A Slug and the Hell Regal, both of which benefit the player by aiming down sights, and the MP18 Experimental because it's just frankly not a good weapon, the weapons of the Assault class tend to best serve the player when fired from the hip. Trench variant or no, the MP18, again with the exception of the Experimental variant, the Automatico M1918, the M97 Trench Gun, the 12-gauge Automatic, and the Model 10A with the exception of the Slug variant are all ideal for hip firing. Even variants with optical sights that encourage the player to aim down sight can still be extremely effective when hip-fired. When done at the close range that all these weapons are designed for, and that you should honestly be finding yourself in anyways, there's really no other class of weapon that can compete. The hip-fire accuracy of even the least accurate assault weapons will be more effective than the trench variants of most other classes' weapons. Now that doesn't mean you should never aim down sights, obviously if you find yourself at an engagement outside of your ideal hip-fire range where you have few options but to return fire, aiming down sight is likely to serve you better. But know that trench variants like the Automatico M1918 and MP18 can still be surprisingly effective at those mid-distances. When in doubt, hip-fire with the assault class weapons. Grenades in Battlefield 1 are a useful tool to all classes, but there's a handful of grenades that can be extra useful to the Assault class, those in particular being the Incendiary Grenades and the Light Anti-Tank Grenades. Incendiary Grenades are extremely useful against infantry, but they're also capable of dealing some light damage against all forms of ground vehicles. While they certainly won't do anywhere near enough damage to bring down any vehicle from full health, it's a great way to get some initial or final damage that ticks over time while also laying down your other anti-vehicle measures. The amount of damage they deal depends in part on how long the vehicle ends up staying in the fire, and while not a major threat, it's a definite help to your ultimate goal of taking that vehicle out. Also remember that with incendiary grenades, should the vehicle driver choose to bail, there's a good possibility that they too might get caught on fire, making the driver easier to dispatch once the vehicle itself has been taken out. The light anti-tank grenades are going to give you a stronger ammunition against the vehicle itself, but the likelihood of you being very effective against infantry with them is a little more slim. If you're on a vehicle-heavy map, they can be very useful, especially if you're focusing most of your attention on vehicles, which, as the Assault class, you really should be. Conversely, the gas grenades have absolutely no effect on vehicles or the people inside of them, so as an Assault class, you may want to skip using that particular grenade unless you happen to be playing on an infantry-only map, which essentially just boils down to Argon Forest, and even then, the other grenades can be more useful if the enemy team ends up with the train. Many of the level 10 weapons in the game are pretty lackluster. The Huo is mediocre at best, the Selb Slaughter 1906 is honestly pretty terrible, and the Martini Henry Infantry is no better than any other infantry variant. 
Overall, they're just not worth the grind. The Hellregal, on the other hand, is actually quite useful for the Assault class and in my humble opinion, well worth the grind to unlock it. Where the other level 10 weapons seem to just be a less impressive version of weapons already available to their respective classes, the Hellregal brings with it some useful stats that other weapons in the Assault class don't offer. It has by far the largest magazine available to the class at a whopping 60 bullets, which is even more than many of the support class light machine guns. It has manageable recoil, a strong rate of fire, comparable damage, and really the only downside is the long reload time, but with 60 bullets in the magazine you don't need to reload very often. It gives the Assault class a decent mid-range option due to the low recoil, and while it'll still get outgunned by many of the support weapons at mid-ranges due primarily to the damage drop-off, it's still a nice addition to the SMG options giving you a bit more freedom in your playstyle. While it'll definitely take a while to unlock it, the time spent is well worth it. Vehicles in Battlefield 1 can be a major threat. They're heavily armored killing machines which most classes, while capable of doing some damage, are not well suited to destroy them consistently. This is where the Assault class comes into its own. The tools at your disposal ranging from anti-tank grenades to anti-tank mines to AT rocket gun and dynamite give you a variety of ways to deal damage to those often frustrating vehicles. If you see an enemy vehicle and choose to ignore it, especially if you're topped up on your anti-vehicle measures, you're essentially neglecting your primary responsibility as the assault class. While it's entirely possible that you may not be able to take out the vehicle entirely on your own, you're more than capable of bringing the vehicle down to just a small percentage of remaining health, leaving your teammates capable of finishing it off if necessary, or finishing it off yourself if you have a support providing you ammo or even just one teammate helping you out. Even if your efforts result in death, it's likely to be a far more worthwhile death than most because you're doing your team a service by making sure that something capable of taking out a lot of your friendly allies won't be able to do so. One or two deaths while trying to take out a tank is far more beneficial to your team than 10 plus deaths that that vehicle can rack up on your team by being left to its own devices. Put your effort into nailing those vehicles and your team will be far better off for your efforts. Now I want to hear some of the things that you think are important to do as the Assault class in Battlefield 1. Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more content, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, this is Toast, and I'll talk to you soon.